good morning children of class 10 we are back again with our biology lessons we are going to deal with the same chapter chapter 2 structure of chromosomes cell cycle cell division this is part 2 now children in our previous video lesson we studied different new things do you remember those we studied what are chromosomes we also studied their discovery of chromosomes that is uh, walter fleming discovered the chromosomes we discussed about chromatin i told you the difference between chromatin and chromosomes hopefully it is clear in your minds isn't it now chromatin i told you are the thread like structures uh, when the cell is not dividing then the dna is in form of fine threads which are known as chromatin and when the cell will divide or starts to divide what happens then this chromatin fibers or chromatin thread like structures they condensed and uh, supercoil themselves to form these chromosomes which i showed you as the x shaped structures isn't it you remember that okay i also told you about uh, what is chromatin made up of of uh, made up of it is made up of dna and histones dna is a uh, nearly 40% and histone is 60% dna full form how all of you remember D dna is deoxy ribonucleic acid remember the spelling also not only the word okay now i told you about the dna what does a uh, dna consist of what it is made up of all these things also i told you it is a macromolecule and dna uh, the uh, uh, smallest unit of dna are the nucleotides and what does this nucleotide consist of nucleotide consist of three components they are phosphate sugar and one more is nitrogenous bases and i also told you there are uh, pentose sugar uh, for dna phosphate and sugar are one but there are four types of nitrogenous bases that is adenine which is represented by a guanine which is represented by g cytosine which is represented by c and thymine which is represented by t i also told you about complementary base pairs what was complementary base pairs adenine always pairs with thymine with how many hydrogen bonds two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds so this pairing between these nitrogenous base pairs is known as complementary base pairing okay now uh, we also discussed about the histone proteins hope you remember what i told you about who the histone proteins that for packing this large which 2 meter long in human uh, in humans if uh, we are talking about to pack this large 2 uh, meter long in, in a particular cell 2 meter long uh, dna what has to be done it has to be packed or wrapped around something the in which uh, uh, means on which molecules are they wrapped they are wrapped around these histone proteins and these histone proteins are known as histone octamer why is that so because histone are uh, means occur as eight molecules okay there are eight molecules of histone forming a football kind of thing around which the uh, this uh, dna is wrapped around now this structure uh, means appears as uh, uh, small beads on the chromatin fiber which are known as the nucleosome so dna strand winds around a core of eight histone proteins which are known as histone octamer and each such complex is known as the nucleosome and a single chromosome might have millions of nucleosomes i also told you that okay now uh, after that we discussed the structure of chromosomes now what was the structure of chromosomes all about i told you a chromosome looks a little bit x shaped structure which has two chromatids and in between these two chromatids are uh, means joined together at a point and it appears as a uh, constricted area or region which is known as the centromere and this centromere is very important for uh, attachment of the spindle fibers i showed you also the diagram of spindle fibers okay we also talked about the genes what were the genes genes are the specific what sequences of nucleotides specific sequences of nucleotides on a chromosome that encode first first uh, firstly they encode for uh, particular proteins which express in the form of a particular feature of the body okay and these genes are the uh, they are the units of heredity which are transferred always from the parents to offspring now children we discussed up to this point okay 
Now let us start with today's lesson. Let us see what new things we'll learn about uh, uh, this uh, chromosome, cell cycle and cell division. Okay. Now we will discuss in this uh, second lesson about the need for new cells. The first topic in this lesson. Need for new cells. Why we need new cells. Okay. First of all, the new cells are needed. Why they are needed? First of all, for growth. Now, you always are growing. When you were born, you were small uh, as, as if your mother can hold uh, you in your arms. But is that possible now? Hopefully not. Your mother will not be able to carry you, isn't it? Now, why is that? Because you have grown. And how did you grow? This every organism be it a plant or an animal, begins its life first of all as a single cell, which is the fertilized egg, okay, which is called the zygote. This cell now divides repeatedly to form what? First of all, a cluster of cells which start shaping for different functions. For example, the tissues are formed, the formed, the organs are formed like heart, lungs, your skin, the hair, everything is formed inside the digestive system, the skeletal system, everything is formed by the division of cells. So, you grow in this way. So, cell division is very important for our growing purpose. Okay. And uh, you can see in the uh, diagram given alongside here how the embryo develops the stages I have given here. Okay. First, you can see the fertilized egg. Okay. The fertilized egg is here and the sperm you can see here is fertilizing the egg. The next stage is the means this zygote is formed. Now, the zygote with the first cleavage. First cleavage means division. You can see two cells there, isn't it? Now, in the next stage, you can see the two cells are divided to form four cells. Now, four cells form eight cells, which is more known as the uh, morula stage. Then, the blastocyst stage. In case of humans, there is no blastula. It is blastocyst stage. And then, and this uh, morula is a solid uh, uh, ball, uh, which uh, there is no hollow space inside, but this blastocyst is a hollow ball with uh, cells around it is hollow inside like a like those uh, cricket balls you see green colored rubber deuce ball and those uh, cambridge balls you see uh, they, they uh, it is somewhat like them and the next stage is the formation of this embryo so until and unless cells divide that single cell that is zygote from which you started your life would not be uh, in the stage which you are seeing yourself now clear so this is only for the for because of the division of cells. Now, next, uh, why we need uh, new cells I is for replacement. Replacement. What do you mean by replacement? There is always wear and tear of cells during the normal body functions. Whenever your body is functioning, always there is some wear and tear. Means some cells get damaged and destroyed. Now, uh, in your book, also one example is given that uh, it means uh, two million red blood cells in our body are destroyed every second. Okay, two million. Red blood cells. Can you imagine the number? So, these need to be replaced. And if it is not replaced, what will happen? Our body will not be able to carry the amount of oxygen which is required for the body to for normal functioning. So, these are replaced by new cells formed through a division of their parent cells in the bone marrow. Okay, The parent cells divide in the bone marrow and then these new cells are formed. Uh, in plants, the old and the dried leaves fall off. You have seen that the old and dried leaves fall off and the new ones grow out. But new ones grow out how? Because the cells which are existing, they divide continuously to form the new cells and thus replacement is there. Now, what do you mean by repair? Apart from normal and we normal wear and tear, normally whatever wear and tear goes on, that is uh, uh, part of the normal functioning of our body. But sometimes there are accidental injuries also. Okay, so replacement occurs when normal wear and tear is there. But repair is when accidents occur. Okay, sometimes there are accidental injuries. For, for example, you may get a cut in your skin or some uh, accident might happen and you get a hairline fracture or a fracture in your bones. Now that is repair. Now what, how this repair is done? Repair of, sub, uh, of such injuries is again through cells which divide, cover up the gaps and join the broken ends. So, you see that uh, your doctor will uh, give you a plaster in your hand or leg wherever you have this, uh, uh, this uh, broken uh, bone. And after some months, you will see that that part uh, which was broken, that part is sealed by new tissues or new cells which, are, which have grown in that damaged part. So, you can understand what, ha what is happening that new cells come and repair those broken ends. Clear?
now next uh, uh, means feature for which new cells are required is for reproduction okay for reproduction also new cells are required reproduction also takes place through the activity of what dividing cells amoeba or bacteria just divide to produce two similar independent cells by mitosis now what happens in case of bacteria or amoeba the existence of the parent cell is no more there okay the parent cell only divides to form two new cells so the existence of the parent cell is uh, no more there but in case of our forms that is higher forms it is different in higher forms what happens as in humans or in any other tree the special cells in the reproductive organs in the reproductive organs we have special cells which are known as the germinal cells okay which undergo a special kind of cell division which is known as meiosis m e i o s i s to produce sperm and egg now children there are two types of division in our body cell division rather there are two types of cell division in our body the first one is mitosis and the second one is meiosis now mitosis always takes place in the body cells the somatic cells somatic means the body cells this uh, uh, the parts of the body gets repaired or growth grown by this process of mitosis but meiosis always takes place in reproductive cells it is the germinal cells to produce sex cells what are the sex cells the sperm and the ova okay from which you two uh, you all are also produced the sperm and the egg uh, receive only half the number of chromosomes of their parent cell we'll uh, discuss this in detail that is one chromosome from each pair this reduction in the chromosome number is very significant now you can see here down at the bottom i have given a diagram which is where it is written kinds of cells and chromosomes come to the kinds of cells first see body cells body cells in man it is 46 chromosomes okay i discussed uh, beforehand only that we have 46 chromosomes and if i pair them up it will be 23 pairs similarly in women also there are 46 pairs we are talking about the body cells okay 46 chromosomes and if i pair it up then it will be if we half it and pair it it will be 23 pairs so 23 pairs means what we are having double of the uh, uh, means uh, 46 if we half it double is 23 plus 23 so 2n we write that 23 plus 23 is 46 so we write 2n so we are diploid this is called diploid number of chromosomes okay we are diploid 2n we have 2n number of chromosomes that is 23 pairs so if you are asked a question that uh, uh, children tell the number of pairs of chromosomes we have in our body cells it is 23 pairs if it is asked name the number of chrom uh, na name the number of chromosomes in our uh, body cells then it will be 46 if pairs are asked then 23 if only number of chromosomes are asked it will be 46 okay now come to the sex cells there is a sperm and the egg now these sex cells do not contain full 46 or 23 pairs of chromosomes as we have in our body cells they contain half now what is the reason that they contain half see they are written 23 single not pairs 23 single means 23 as 46 we have in the cells of body half is there in case of sperm and egg that is 23 and egg also 23 now what will happen if we have half the number of chromosomes see the sperm and the egg they meet during fertilization to form the zygote now when they meet uh, or they will, the sperm and the ova fertilize each other that is 23 plus 23 we retain again the 46 number of chromosome which is our normal chromosome number so that's why 23 is the sperm uh, chromosome number and 23 for the egg when they meet they form the normal 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs that is the diploid number is retained again and this 23 which is written it is called haploid haploid means half diploid means double so what sex cells have that is haploid body cells have its double that is diploid clear now we'll go into the next slide now here we start with the cell cycle children now uh cell cycle you are reading for the first time again so we'll go into the detail of it now what do you mean by a cell cycle in order to means in order for a cell to divide it must complete several important tasks okay not only you say that okay cell divide and it will divide no it has to perform some important task okay the cell must grow synthesize material like proteins and rna rna is what ribonucleic acid 
etc these things are synthesized and duplicates it uh, duplicate its dna what do you mean by duplicate means produce a copy of its dna before physically splitting into two daughter cells so before splitting before the parent cell splits into two daughter cells it uh, synthesizes many things like proteins and rna also it doubles its dna why doubling of dna we'll see all these things certain uh, cells perform uh, these cells perform these tasks in an organized manner uh, or with a series of events which is called the cell cycle so these uh, means series of events which un uh, the cell undergoes to uh, divide it is known as cell cycle now this cell cycle consists of two phases a not dividing phase which is called the interphase here the cell does not divide here only the cell is preparing itself for division and the next is the dividing phase which is called as the m phase or the mitosis not meiosis here we are discussing about body cells okay okay now the first phase we'll discuss it is interphase which i have written as preparatory uh, preparatory phase okay now in your book it is not written preparatory phase but i have written here because misconception wise this phase is sometimes called the what resting phase okay but there is no sign of any rest why it was told as resting phase i'll also tell that we previously it was known as resting phase because the chromatin fibers or the chromosomes did not show they were very inactive they did not show any division they did not show any coiling or any other thing nothing was shown that's why it was considered as a resting phase but here the cell is metabolically very active it pr produces rna it produces uh, this uh, proteins duplicates its dna so metabolically it is very active but chromosome wise if we see it is resting that's why sometimes it was it is called resting phase that is uh, uh, deal what is uh, all about this interface the two daughter cells produced from a mother cell are relatively very small with a full size nucleus but relatively little, le uh, very little cytoplasm now when this cell first uh, will enter interphase okay when it starts to enter for example a cell has divided uh, two uh, one parent cell has divided and the two daughter cells are formed now when these daughter cells are formed they will again enter cell cycle now when they enter cell cycle they has to they have to first go into through the interphase okay why they go they have to go through the interphase because when these new cells are formed first they have very little cytoplasm and they are very small in size so they have, don't have the capability of division so they have to prepare themselves okay these cells are said to be in interphase during this phase they prepare for the next cell division and grow to the same size as their mother cell so they grow into the same size as their mother cell so that they now can divide since no change in the chromosomes is visible externally during the interphase formerly it was called the resting phase i already told you it was known as the resting phase of the cell previously but in reality it is not true as the cell is quite active during interphase in synthesizing more amount of dna okay now this interphase itself again has three phases of its own the first growth phase the synthesis phase and the second growth phase so we'll first deal with the first growth phase what is all about the first growth phase it is also known as the g1 phase now rna and proteins are synthesized very important sometimes you are asked in the uh, asked uh, children that uh, tell some events of the um, first growth phase okay so rna and proteins are synthesized the volume of the cytoplasm increases the mitochondria and chloroplast divide very very important i am telling you why now you are thinking how can a mitochondria which is a cell organelle and chloroplast in plant cell how can they divide now remember children always these mitochondria and chloroplast they are considered as semi autonomous body semi autonomous why because they have dna of their own okay they have a circular dna of their own that's why they have the capability of division means one mitochondria can itself form another mitochondria or another and chloroplast also can form another chloroplast by itself by dividing by itself it does not have to wait for the full cell to divide then only the mitochondria will divide no so mitochondria and chloroplast can divide why the reason i am telling you because they have dna of their own okay 
Now, in the late G1 phase, all the cells have two parts. In the late G1 phase, when the G1 phase is just ending, all the cells have two parts to go. Either they withdraw from the cell cycle, means they have secreted all the cytoplasm, lot and lots of cytoplasm is there, lot of RNA and proteins are there, mitochondria and chloroplast has also divided. Now, they can either withdraw from the cell cycle, means they tell, no, I will not divide anymore. So, they withdraw, they move away from the cell cycle and rest and they rest or one more option is there that they start preparing for the next division by entering the synthesis phase. Now, some cells move away from the cell cycle and they don't divide any further. Some cells, what they do? They enter into the next uh, phase of the interphase that is the synthesis phase or the S phase. Now, those cells which withdraw from the cell cycle, why they don't divide? Because they undergo specialization. What is specialization? Because they have a particular function to perform. They, uh, they, go, they undergo differentiation. For example, nerve cells. They don't divide anymore and they perform the nervous, uh, the neural control and everything, these functions they perform. They don't divide anymore, okay? But some cells like our uh, skin cells and many other cells of our body are there, uh, which again divide and enter the synthesis phase. What happens in synthesis phase? More DNA is synthesized and the chromosomes are duplicated. Now children, very, very important point, questions are asked, name the uh, phase of interphase where the chromosomes duplicate or double itself. It is the synthesis phase okay now children you are thinking why this chromosomes are duplicated now chromosomes are duplicated why for example after this interface is complete the cell will undergo cell division when the cell undergoes cell division it will form from one parent cell two daughter cells will be formed if two daughter cells are formed and there is only one copy of dna or chromosomes then one of the cells will have the copy of dna and the other cell will 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 be left with Nothing. That's why the chromosome gets doubled so that DNA is equally divided into both the daughter cells. Okay. Now comes the last phase of the interphase that is the second growth phase which is also known as the G2 phase. Here what happens more and more RNA and proteins continue to be synthesized. The cell is now ready to enter the dividing phase that is the mitosis phase. It is now ready to go into the dividing phase. Now it will start to divide. Now see the diagram alongside children. Here you can see that I have uh, started with interphases. Full purple band is the interphase. The growth uh, G1 phase is the growth G1 phase or growth, first growth phase is G1. S phase uh, where the du duplication of the DNA takes place and G2 phase it prepares itself for the uh, uh, this uh, the cell cell cycle means the cell division rather okay that is mitosis now you can see here I have written here G1 phase G1 phase you can see G1 uh, uh, from the G1 phase one arrow has gone round where it is written G0 phase it is known as G0 phase okay from G1 in the late G1 or when the first growth phase is ending, some of the cells I told you withdraw from the cell cycle and rest. This resting phase is the G0 phase. Some of the, if you are asked, what do you mean by G0 phase or G0 phase? What is G0 phase? G0 phase means the phase whereby the cell after at the uh, when it is uh, near to the end of the first growth phase that is g1 phase when it has synthesized lots and lots of rna and proteins and the volume of cytoplasm and mitochondria and chloroplast has already increased now it withdraws from the cell cycle and it rests it uh, means gets specialized to perform a function this is called g0 phase okay you can write in your copies whatever i have told that g0 phase is sometimes asked now after g0 phase it uh, goes uh, means performs a particular function and leaves the cell cycle and you can see g1 phase then s phase then g2 phase after g phase this full mitosis is there that is prophase prometaphase metaphase anaphase telophase and cytokinesis this will deal with in the subsequent videos and here two arrows are there you can see that is two daughter cells are formed from mitosis that's why okay let us go into the next slide. Now, formation of uh, new DNA. How this formation of new DNA takes place? We saw that uh, duplication of DNA takes place, but how this formation of new DNA takes place? Each DNA molecules doubles itself. Okay? 
each DNA molecule doubles itself during the S phase, we understood, of interphase, so that there is equal amount of DNA in both the daughter cells during mitosis. This I have already explained to you. For replication, what is done? The DNA double helix, we already have talked about the DNA double helix, the two strands of DNA open at one end. Now, see, follow the diagram as we read, okay? The uh, DNA double helix opens at one end, making the two strands free. So you see in the second diagram, in the first diagram, the original DNA is there with two gray colored strands. The two One side of the two gray colored strands are opening, okay? Uh, making the two strands free. Where it, where it is opening, the two strands are not coiled among each other and they are becoming free. To which the new strands begin to form. Here the two strands are getting formed. Where the new strands, the, the old strands are opening, the grey colour strands are opening, you can see the two blue strands have come and the new strands are getting formed. Now, you might be thinking, you know that the DNA are formed from nucleotides and the nucleotides are already present in the uh, this nucleoplasm. Okay, It is already present in the nucleoplasm. That's why it can get formed. Now, to which the new strands begin to form. This continues for the whole length of the DNA. Now see what has what will happen ultimately. This whole in the third diagram of this DNA, the whole DNA strand will open, and this new DNA strand along with the old strand will be formed. And in the last diagram of this one, we, we, what you can see, see with a grey color strand, a blue color strand has come. How? Because one is the old parent strand, and is the, the blue one is the new strand which is formed. Similarly, the other one with the old parent strand and a new parent strand. So, new double helices are formed. So, like this, the DNA or the chromosomes duplicate itself. Okay. So, this is all about how new strands or double strands are formed. Duplication is done. This is called DNA replication. Replication means form a duplicate copy of itself. Okay, let us go into the next slide. Now, can the cell cycle go on endlessly? Do you think that the cell cycle can go on and on and on? No, not for all cells, okay? Now, let us see which cells. Brain and other nerve cells, once they are formed in the embryo, do not divide any further. Brain and nerve cells, remember children, once the brain or the nerve cells are formed, they do not form any further or do not divide any further to form new cells. And if they are damaged also, no new nerve cells will be formed. Then you might be thinking that how uh, these brain tumors are formed and ca brain cancers are formed, ma'am, tell us then. Actually, what happens, children? In our nervous system, uh, the, the nervous system comprises of two types of cells, the nerve cells and the nu neuroglial cells or the glial cells. Neuroglial spelling is N-U-E-R-O-G-L-I-A-L, N -U -E -R -O -G -L -I -A -L, neuroglial cells cells. These neuroglial cells actually they divide, okay? They divide to form this brain cancer or brain tumors, okay? The nerve cells, actual nerve cells, they do not divide, which you know that comprise of the cyton and the axons, okay? They do not divide, clear? So, who divides? We understood, okay? Liver cells may divide once in every two or one or two years to replace the damaged cells only, not always, okay? Whenever required, they divide. The cells of the surface of the skin continuously are lost and are replaced by the underlying cells. In plant cells, the cells at the shoot tip and root tip, you know, they are the here the meristematic cells are present. They In class 9, you read about meristematic cells. They are uh, uh, present at the growing points or growing tips and they divide very rapidly to lead to the growth of the plant. Also, uh, by girth, also intercalary meristems you have learned, they also divide very fast. Specialized germinal cells in the ovary and testis in animals and in the ovary and anthers in plants undergo other type of cell division called meiosis to produce sex cells. I have already told you children that for producing sex cells like in animals, sperm and ova uh, uh, means what happens this and in case of uh, 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 plants it is uh, from the ovaries produce the egg cell and from the anthers are produced the pollen grains you know and these pollen grains have the male gametes okay and to produce these sex cells always meiosis will occur because these are reproductive cells reproductive cells whenever they are formed they will be produced by the process of meiosis and not mitosis mitosis is only for whom for body cells or somatic cells clear so uh, meiosis occurs there now un uncontrolled non-stop cell cycles may lead to 
tumors now whenever there is uncontrolled growth or uncontrolled uh, uh, growth i mean uh, cell cycle or cell division which grows uh, goes on they may lead to tumors now tumors may or may not be cancerous always tumors are not of any harm benign tumors are not of any harm but malignant tumors are cancerous cancerous means they may spread to different organs through blood and actually tumors benign tumors are they remain confined to a organ they are not spread to other organs okay and whenever the tumors which are that is malignant tumors which are cancerous may, mainly malignant tumors are cancerous they actually what happens they uh, leave the organs and by blood and limb they move to other places that is other parts of the body and they are also rapid division of the cells goes on so this is cancerous this may be cancerous always tumors are not harmful tumors may be taken out from the part of the body in which it has occurred okay children now uh, uh, one more thing i need to tell you children uh, which you need to understand now uh, cell production and cell death now you might be thinking how much cells are produced and how much cells die okay now what happens children you if you see a small baby okay what happens in case of a small baby they need to grow very fast now what happens in small babies the number of cells which are dying number of cells which are uh, means uh, uh, dying every day are replaced by more number of cells okay means if two cells are dying four will be produced then only they will grow isn't it if it is equal to death uh, two dies two cell die and two cells are formed there will be no growth of the baby okay that is in a small baby or in children's what we see that the new cells are continuously being produced and they outnumber the dying cells outnumber means they are produced more than the ones which are dying in case of adults what happens the cell population always stays constant because they have already grown up to a mature stage so the number of new cells which are produced equals the number of <coughs> sorry <coughs> the number of cells which are dying so number of cells dying equal number of cells will be replaced and in case of old ones you can see that they are very fragile and very uh, they get tired very soon why is that because the number of cells which are dying each day are not replaced by the same number of cells always the number of cells uh, which are dying replace half are replaced for example if four cells are dying only two will be replaced and other two will not be replaced that's why they are very weak and fragile and they cannot perform very uh, means uh, uh, active task they cannot perform this is the reason okay so children uh, by this we complete our lesson for today uh, i'll be back with a very interesting part that is cell division that is mitosis as well as meiosis in the next video lesson till then you go through all these things all these uh, points which we discussed today very nicely memorize the important things which i told you the abbreviations and all these things and i'll be very uh, i'll be i'll be back very soon okay till then thank you and goodbye